Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. This is the last section of Chapter 4 before we get onto magnetostatics. This is Section 445, Polarization and Susceptibility, from Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics, 2nd Edition. I'm going to go fast, but you can always rewind. If you like what I'm doing, be sure to like and share with your friends. And if you have any comments or questions, you can do a video response or respond in the comments below. Polarization and Susceptibility. We're going to map, back in the very first section we talked about the um, polarization, the atomic polarization. So we have our little dipole moment is um, induced in a a uh, atom or nonpolar atoms or molecules when we exert an electric field on it. So this little dipole moment is created with the constant of alpha. We also know that the polarization of a material is equal to epsilon naught chi e times the total electric field that that thing is in. So um, we can naively put this together to try to map this alpha to our constant susceptibility here. Uh, we can say that the dipole moment per unit volume, this is the dipole moment per unit volume, is basically P vector is equal to the number of atoms times the dipole moment of each, which would just give us N alpha times the electric field that the atoms are put into. And so you can say, oh, look at this. Chi E is equal to N alpha divided by epsilon naught. And this is very naive to say that. But it's not far off. It's close. But it's not completely correct. The problem is, is that you're not thinking about the electric field this creates. And you're not thinking of, um, you, you basically have to do an analysis of all the things outside and all the things inside and see how they add up. So let's um, divide up our substance, give one space to each atom. Each atom has radius capital R. And we'll put an atom at the center there for, for each atom's little space. So we get the number of atoms, uh, the density of atoms, 1 over 4 thirds pi r squared. Um, so now we can write the electric field the macroscopic electric field as equal to the electric field due to that atom plus the electric field due to everything else outside of that atom. So this is the actually the average of the atomic field within this sphere that we're talking about. So we look sphere here, radius r. Okay. Um, let's write here that the polarization, the dipole moment of the atom is actually only due to the electric field of everything outside. Okay. And so the polarization at this point is actually this formula, not the total electric field. Okay. Um, so what's the electric field due to the dipole moment? That's just negative 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, the dipole moment, divided by r cubed. So the sum of these two, we take the self, which is this dude, negative 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, we're going to substitute in here that this is actually alpha e else. Okay, so we have alpha e vector else divided by r cubed plus the electric field due to everything else. Okay, and we can rewrite that as just, you know, 1 minus 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught uh, alpha over r cubed times the e vector due to everything else. Okay. And using this equation to substitute n for r, see we had 4 thirds pi, so we need a 3 on the top. Uh, 3, no, 3 on the bottom, duh. So we have n alpha over 3 epsilon naught. Okay, that's the total electric field. So, and thus the polarization. 
um, which is polarization is n alpha divided by that. Why is it dividing? Mm, oh, that's right. Okay. So E else. E else is equal to 1 over that. Okay. Times the electric field that we end up with. And so the polarization which is just n alpha times the electric field is actually equal to 1 over no oh, n alpha divided by 1 minus n alpha over 3 epsilon naught times the electric field. And so this chunk is epsilon naught chi e of the material. And so we get chi e is equal to n alpha over epsilon naught times 1 minus n alpha over 3 epsilon naught. Okay. This is a much more accurate description of the susceptibility given the atomic polarizability. And um, if we let's let's use our primitive atom that we did in, in exercise example one. So we for the primitive atom we found that this was the you had a, a, a sphere of of solid density charge uh, opposite to the nucleus at the center. And so the alpha that we calculated there was equal to 4 pi epsilon naught a cubed, where a cubed is the radius of the atom. And so we get a chi e of n times 4 pi a cubed all over 1 minus 4 thirds n times 4 thirds pi a cubed, which you can rewrite it using it as f, where f is equal to 4 thirds pi alpha cubed uh, over 4 thirds pi r cubed, which is the um, fraction of the total volume um, allocated to each atom that e this atom, uh, this primitive atom actually takes. And when you have a gas where each atom takes a very small tiny fraction of the total space. This is a really close equation. This gets you very close to your the chi e that you'd actually measure. Um, when you have a liquid or a solid where the density starts to approach, you know, where a cubed over r cubed approaches 1, where this f approaches 1, um, this obviously doesn't work very well. Um, the reason why is in real life atoms don't don't arrange themselves that way. They don't arrange themselves like in a box, like we've done here. So um, we can't pretend that this is going to be very accurate for that scenario. But it is it is really really cool. In fact, that we could um, the formula that we normally have is that our alpha is equal to 3 epsilon naught over n times k minus 1 over k plus 2. That's the formula that people tend to use. k is easily measured. You just take a, a capacitor, measure its capacitance, then throw in the dielectric material, and voila, there's your k. Um, this equation is known as the clausius mosadi uh, formula. I'll write that down. Of course, it's in your book. That's where I'm getting it from. Um, and optics, it's called the Lorentz-Lorentz equation. Um, so what about polar molecules? What happens when you take a polar molecule and you stick it in a field? What does its susceptibility turn into? And if you take a very naive model, let me just kind of draw what this looks like out. So we have, let's say we have our water at absolute zero. Um, different dipole moments like this are just pointing all over the place, you know, doing whatever they want. And then if you put a tiny electric field on top of this, what would happen is all of these molecules would instantly align with that field. 
Okay. The reason why this doesn't happen in real life is because these things are bouncing around and, and, and bumping into each other. And so there's actually a dependence between temperature and the polarized the, the polar the susceptibility of materials made out of um, molecules that already have a dipole moment. That's a fun problem to solve. It involves statistical mechanics, and there's a problem 433 in the second edition. We'll walk you through that solution, which is kind of fun. So anyway, hope you had fun with this chapter. Um, hope you'll stay with me for chapter five when we get to talk about magnetostatics. And otherwise, uh, have a good day. Thanks, bye.